Hello, my name is Vanessa Faulkner, and I am one of the youth outreach workers with Central Health. I work in the Green Bay and White Bay areas. Today for this webinar, we will be focusing on mental wellness, what it is and why it's important. Hopefully by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of mental health, mental wellness, mental illness, and have some coping self-care techniques that maybe you or someone you know can use. So we're just gonna get started. So what is mental health? When we talk about mental wellness, the first question we should ask ourselves is what is mental health? A lot of times when we hear the word mental health, we think about things like our brain or maybe even the words bipolar, depression and anxiety come to mind. We sometimes confuse mental health and mental illness and hopefully by the end of this webinar, we all have a clear understanding and the differences between the two. So the first question is, what is mental health? Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we feel and act. It helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. Mental health is a state of well-being, and we all have it. Just like we each have a state of physical health, we also each have our own mental health to look after. It's not just about surviving, it's about thriving. It's enjoying life, having a sense of purpose, and being able to manage life's highs and lows. When we talk about mental health, we're talking about our mental well-being, our emotions, our thoughts and feelings, our ability to solve problems and overcome difficulties, our social connections, and our understanding of the world around us. Some days, we probably feel like we are handling problems and stress really well. Other days, we may, may feel completely the opposite, and that's okay. Mental health is not only the avoidance of a serious mental illness. If someone does have a mental illness, that does not mean they cannot have good mental health. We all have mental health, and we need to learn to take care of it. Our mental wellness wheel. We just explored the definition of mental health. And if we are going to achieve mental wellness, there are many factors that influence our lives and make up who we are. These factors can impact our mental wellness in a positive or possibly in a negative way. So on your screen, you'll see our mental wellness wheel. So we're gonna look at each of those factors. So intellectual. So some of the things that I will talk about could be tips or tricks to help with your mental wellness. Um, so intellectual, be curious, learn by watching, listening and doing. Expand on knowledge you already have and share it with others. Our next factor is physical. Eat well, exercise, get outdoors, sleep, and I can't emphasize enough to get enough sleep. There is a strong link between how you feel physically to how you feel mentally and vice versa. Be mindful of your body and what it needs. And I know a lot of times when I'm speaking to young people, they think, oh, I get enough sleep. But if you're anything like me, if you don't get enough sleep, you're probably easily irritated and maybe a little bit grumpy. Our next factor is emotional. We all experience emotions and feelings. Sometimes we notice ourselves feeling very positive. Sometimes we may feel more negative. Learning strategies to manage our emotions can help us improve our mental health. We also need to be self-aware, show empathy and compassion towards others, and try to be realistic about the situation we find ourselves in. And sometimes it's really easy to look at what's going on around us and think the worst, but let's take a second to be realistic about what's happening. Spiritual, this is our values, beliefs, ethics, and morals, which determine how we contribute to our community. This helps make up who we are and how we view the world around us. Social, allows us to build healthy relationships with others, our ability to relate to others and connect with them. So it's important to establish and maintain positive and healthy relationships with those around us. If our relationships are more negative, that can take its toll on our mental wellness. Our environment, we want the environment we live in to be a safe space. We want it to be calm, clean, and to feel cared for. This can include your home, your school, maybe your workplace if you have a job, or even just the world around us. 
occupational. Now I know some of you are probably looking at that word on the screen thinking, I don't even have a job. But you're probably going to school. So try your best in school. Find something you're passionate about. If you do have a part-time job or a summer job, do it well. Work hard. It helps us build confidence and allows us to feel like we are contrib contributing to our society. We should try to balance work, school, and of course downtime with family and friends as much as possible. All of these factors together affect our mental wellness. And hopefully it affects our mental wellness positively, but it can also impact us negatively depending on what's going on around us. So mental health problems, what are they? Everyone can experience a mental health problem, can impact our ability to handle day-to-day -day situations and enjoy life, can be caused by stress, relationship issues, death of a pet, and the list can just go on and on. So anyone can experience a mental health problem. Things such as sadness, anger, stress, inability to cope, feeling like you failed, we can all experience a mental health problem from time to time. We all face situations that can cause us stress, such as losing a pet or a loved one, failing a test, all of that affects our mental health. We may feel sad, alone, or very down, and it may impact our ability temporarily to make decisions. In my experience, as I already said, many young people can use mental illness with mental health. However, there is a difference between the two. One major difference is that everyone has mental health, but not everyone has a mental illness. So we're gonna look at that now. Mental illness, characterized by changes in thinking, mood, and behavior, and is associated with significant distress, and, distress sorry, and impaired functioning. Symptoms may vary from mild to severe, depending on the individual, their family, and or maybe their environment. Individuals may not be able to perform the simplest task of everyday life, things like getting up, getting dressed, showering. When someone has a mental illness, they are not just feeling bad. Mental illness is an illness that affects the way people think, feel, behave, or even their ability to interact with others. There are many different mental illnesses, and they have very different symptoms that impact people's lives in a variety of ways. For this webinar, we will look at the two most common mental illnesses that affect youth, depression and anxiety. So first, depression. Depression is not just feeling blue. It's not just feeling down or sad. We all have days where we feel sad or we even feel down. But depression symptoms typically last longer than two weeks and can impair our daily lives. We may lose interest or find it very difficult to do tasks that we've been doing every day or even lose interest in doing tasks that we once really like to do. We have a video from the Canadian Mental Health Association. And this video talks about the difference between depression and mood changes and the symptoms someone who has depression may be experiencing. We all have some changes. Sometimes we feel up and sometimes we feel down. They usually don't last long and we can get past them. But this isn't the case with depression. Depression is an illness that affects people's moods and emotions, the way they feel about themselves and others, and the way they cope with stress and challenges. Common symptoms of depression include sadness, often without an obvious cause, Hopelessness, trouble concentrating, changes in sleeping and eating, crying, not enjoying the things you used to, withdrawing from others. So what's the difference between depression and regular mood changes? With depression, symptoms last at least two weeks and can interfere with your daily functioning, like going to work, going to school, and taking care of yourself. Depression can affect anyone, and with the right health, people can recover. If you or someone you know is struggling with these symptoms, talk to your doctor or call us at CMHA. If you or someone you know is experiencing depression, you or they are not alone. 
and there are so many great resources available. At the end of this webinar, I will talk about the resources that are available and the resources that are available especially to you. So next, anxiety. We all have anxiety. We can all feel anxious from time to time. Think of getting ready for your very first major sports performance, maybe saying a line or two in a Christmas concert, writing your very first exam, doing your driver's license road, road test. All those things can cause us some anxiety or stress. But anxiety disorders are different. It's a feeling that it does not go away and your typical life situations cause elevated stress or even panic. So just like when we talked about depression, the Canadian Mental Health Association put out a video explaining the differences between everyday anxiety and anxiety disorders. So we're gonna to listen to that. We all feel worried at times. It may be a job interview or a stressful meeting. This kind of anxiety is normal and usually passes. But anxiety disorders are different. They cause excessive levels of anxiety that affect the way people think, feel, and behave every single day. Common symptoms of anxiety include feeling fearful and worried, even when no problems exist, irritability, racing thoughts that you can't control, changes in sleeping and eating, reliving upsetting events, and physical symptoms like upset stomach and racing heart. So what's the difference between an anxiety disorder and regular everyday anxiety? With anxiety disorders, these symptoms are longer lasting, weeks or even months, and interfere with people's regular functioning. They may not do the things they used to enjoy because of their anxiety. Anxiety disorders can affect anyone, and with the right help, People can recover and have healthy lives. If you or someone you know is struggling with these symptoms, talk to your doctor or call us at CMHA. Anxiety disorders can affect daily life. There is help for anyone experiencing anxiety disorder. And again, I will discuss those resources available to you at the end of this webinar. So when we talk about mental health and mental illness, there's a lot of myths. And so today we're going to look at some of those myths and bust them and get the correct information out there. So the first myth is that it is more important to take care of your physical health than your mental health. Well, actually, it is important throughout your life to take care of both your physical and mental well-being to live the healthiest life possible. And some would say you can't have one really without having the other. So both are important. Another myth, one of the main causes of mental illness is personal weakness. Mental illness is an illness, not a character flaw. It's really important to know that mental illness is not a sign of personal weakness or character flaw, nor is it caused by the person. Individuals cannot just snap out of it, and telling someone to snap out of it can be very hurtful to them. Mental illness does not discriminate, and therefore, no one is immune. Anyone can have a mental illness, and it can impact anyone regardless of age or gender, etc. The next myth. People with a mental illness are violent and dangerous. And unfortunately, this is a myth that I hear a lot, but they are far more likely to be victims than perpetrators of violence. It is true that individuals with mental illness may struggle to control their emotions, their thoughts and behaviors. However, most people living with a mental illness are not violent. In fact, individuals with mental illness are far more likely to be the victims of violence than the perpetrator. Here's another common myth that we often hear. People with depression are lazy. We know that's not true. Individuals with depression may find it hard to complete everyday tasks due to the changes in thinking, mood, and behavior that occur with mental illness. It's not about laziness. It's a about not being able to cope with the norm, normal stressors of everyday life. And as I said before, things that they used to do every day or even enjoy doing, they've kind of lost interest in. So when we're talking about mental health, mental illness, and mental wellness, 
we need to look at some coping strategies or self-care tips. So maybe you've already developed some great self-care techniques that work for you, but it's important that to remember that what works for you may not work for someone else, and what works for me may not work for you, and that's okay. So I've on your screen, I've put up a, a little uh, picture of some ideas that might work for you, or maybe someone you know. So we're gonna talk about each of them. So journaling is the first one. And journaling is so good because if you're having thoughts racing around in your head or maybe you're worried about something or feeling stressed or overwhelmed, getting those thoughts out of your head and onto a piece of paper and just that practice of doing that makes you feel a little bit better. But it's also just something personal for you where you can jot down your thoughts, maybe what you've done that day, maybe something that's happened that has caused you stress, and it just helps you kind of release that information or release that feeling of being overwhelmed. Reading a good book, getting lost in a good book or a good story is a great way to just take your mind off things temporarily. Kind of gives you a chance to reset and think about what's happening around you. Starting a new hobby. Sometimes we don't know what we're good at until we try something new. So maybe you feel like you're artistic, but you've never done any drawing, or maybe you've never done any painting. Try it. Pick up that hobby, or maybe it will become a hobby. Just start something new. Sleep. I already talked about sleep and the importance of getting enough sleep. And it is so important to get a good night's rest. Sometimes it means putting away the technology a little bit earlier, kind of lets our mind unwind a little bit and then we can rest a little bit better. Smile. You're probably thinking, why is that even on the screen? That's kind of cheesy. But smile, laugh, let someone tell you a funny story, watch a funny video. Laughing is good, smiling is good, it makes us feel better. So be around people that make you laugh, that make you smile. Being alone. This is not for everyone. But being alone does give you a chance to kind of take your mind off things. Maybe you're going for a walk by yourself. Maybe you're just sitting outside by yourself. But be alone. Think about what's happening around you. Gives you a chance to just take a breath and relax. And if you really don't like being alone, maybe you can be with a friend or a family member. And you can talk about what's happening around you. And that kind of leads into the next one, which is asking for help. There are a lot of great resources that are available, but there's also probably a lot of people in your life where you can, who you can talk to to ask for help. So think about who you have in your life that you have a healthy relationship with. Maybe it's a parent, a family member, a sibling, a coach, a teacher, principal, guidance counselor. You have lots of people in your life, and if you feel comfortable, you can ask for help. But maybe you don't wanna to talk to somebody that you know. So here's where our list of mental health resources come in handy. So on your screen, you'll notice um, the name of an organization and then some phone numbers. But I just wanna highlight a few of them. Our mental health crisis line, this is more for if you are in a crisis. The channel warm line, this one is if you're 16 years of age and older, this is peer support. So when you call that number, you're connected to someone who can walk you through how you're feeling, kind of what you're going through, someone who can relate to how you're feeling. The health line, this is our provincial health line, 811. And you can call this number if you're just looking for any kind of health services. So it could be something for mental health, or it could be a family doctor. You could want, maybe you want to talk to a dietitian. You can call 811 and they can help redirect your call. The Kids Help Phone Crisis Text Line, and this is a texting service. It is powered by the Kids Help Phone, but it's for anyone of any age who can text. Um, so you can text that line and you will start texting with a trained crisis responder and they can help talk you through your situation, take you from a hot moment to hopefully feeling a little bit more cool and calm and relaxed. The Kids Help Phone, same thing, except this is the telephone line. And when you call that number, again, you're connected with a trained counselor who can talk you through what's going on 
And all those things are private and confidential. And so, and maybe it'll make you feel a little better because you don't necessarily know the person on the other line. There's one more service that I want to talk about, which is not on your screen, but that's doorways. And maybe you've heard of our doorways service, but it's a walk-in or virtually or over the phone counseling service. And you can connect with a mental health and addictions counselor in your area. So the easiest way to connect to that service is to call 811 or to call your local mental health and addictions office and you'll be connected with a counselor. So there's a few more resources that are available to you. So Bridge the Gap, which if you're listening to this webinar, you're probably on Bridge the Gap right now. Bridge the Gap with two P's dot CA has a whole list of information on different mental health and addictions topics and services, so many great videos and links to other websites to help you get more information. So check out that website, Depression Hurts, Mood Disorder Society of Canada, Mind Your Mind, and Anxiety Canada. Also all very great resources and websites that are worth checking out. So that's it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have learned something about mental health, mental illness, and mental wellness. And you can distinguish the difference between mental health, which we all have, and mental, mental illness. And we talked about depression and anxiety because those are two of the most common mental illnesses that you face. So I just want you to remember that you are not alone. If you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health issue, Please remember you are not alone and help is available. Call 811 and you can be connected with services in your area or maybe you have a question and you can get the information that you need. Doorways, which I already said is available all across our province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thanks again for listening and remember you are not alone.